Welcome to the Careers in Finance series on FinPod by CFI, where we sit down with finance professionals to explore their career journeys. Join us for ideas, insights, and inspiration to help you advance your career in finance. Hello and welcome to CFI's Careers in Finance podcast. I'm Asim Khan with CFI, and I'm joined today by Chris Ortega, the CEO of Fresh FPNA. Chris, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, so we'd love to hear about your journey and how you got to where you are. But let's why don't we start uh, at the at the present? Um, tell us about Fresh FPNA and a bit about your business model and some of the work that you do. Yeah, so I lead a global fractional CFO and advisory service company called Fresh FPNA, and we empower small to medium sized businesses, typically ranging from about one to about eighty million dollars in revenue that are seeking financial clarity and growth. So we serve as their strategic CFO and their strategic finance function to help them build, shape, and scale their finance organization. So I've been leading the business for a little over three years, and I took the leap of faith after spending about 20 years in accounting, finance, FP&A, and financial leadership, primarily building grow and growing businesses. So I took the leap of faith and uh, lived out my initials as CEO. So that's currently what I'm doing at Fresh FP&A. That is that is excellent. Um, and then, so do you have a, uh, a background in accounting? I presume is that how you got yeah. to start? Yeah, yeah. So I started my career uh, originally in college. I'll be pretty quick. Originally in college, I was a marketing major, and uh, then during the time when I was in college, one of the biggest accounting things changed, which was Sarbanes Oxley. You had Enron, you had Anderson going away, and it was uh, it was like everybody was getting jobs in college. So I switched over to accounting and finance, and I began my career in public accounting at Ernst & Young. Really, really great experience here in Indianapolis. I got to work with and do auditing for a lot of Fortune 1000 companies. Uh, that was uh, probably pretty much the first chapter of my career. I spent mostly in accounting, uh, corporate public accounting, and also like accounting at a private company. And then the middle half of my career is where I spent most of my time in like high growth, uh, finance and FP&A organizations, both in like large public pharma dr drug development company, all the way to like SMB startup businesses. And then the later stage of my career is where I spend most of my time building and shaping from a financial leadership perspective. Uh, most recently, I was at an international marketing platform company, helped build that up and sold that off to acquisition to SAP. So those are pretty much the three chapters of my career, accounting, finance, FP&A, and then financial leadership. And now entering in this new chapter of my career, CEO of Fresh FP&A. Oh, that's great. So when we spoke offline, you said FP&A, yes, of course, it's financial planning analysis. But in your case, given uh, you know kind of the value you bring to your customer base, it also stands for, I, I believe you said, financial partner and advisor. Can you tell us about that aspect of your work? Yeah. So looking back over my career and looking at the value we wanted to provide to SMB businesses, right? Like when you think of traditional FP&A, which is that financial planning analysis, we have entered the area of technology where technology should be doing that a lot faster, a lot more efficient than a person. And really where the value add and really the fresh perspective that we're giving to uh, FP&A is going to be that financial partner and advisor. So for me, I think it, it's it's a mixture of those quantitative skills, but also even more reliance on those qualitative skills, which is communication, collaboration, turning complexity into clarity for your business partners. So to me, that's why when I was thinking about starting the business of Fresh FP&A, we wanted to name it the Fresh Financial Partners and Advisors to bring that fresh view to finance. So that's our version of mm -hmm. FP&A. Interesting. And so I'm just going to latch on to something you said. You said that the FP&A bit, the modeling and all that, yes. you're saying technology could do that faster, perhaps better than humans can. Uh, and I presume you're talking then about AI. Yeah, not necessarily AI, but when you think of like the FP&A, the traditional financial planning analysis, there's so many great technology platforms that are out there, right? So you know, you shouldn't be spending your time, energy, and effort doing all your Excel modeling, right? There's great tools, there's great resources, whether that's budgeting and planning, whether that's RPA technologies, whether that's Gen AI, whether that's prescriptive and predictive analytics, or that's machine learning. I think one of the key things for the office of the CFO right now is like we've actually entered a great age of technology adoption and technology that can complement us. So 
you don't want to spend your high value time, energy, and effort or your high potential, high performing resources on a lot of that tactical level work. You want them to be involved in that strategic level work. And in leading finance teams for over 20 years, technology has always been a compliment to me. It's got us out of the the data gathering, the refreshing, the wait until models to update and get us into that higher strategic value, which is what I mentioned, being a great communicator, collaboration inside the business and turning complexity into clarity. Like those are great skill sets that the business values. So to me, that's where technology and where we enter the age where, where there's generative AI or whole suite of technologies to actually enable the office of the CFO to be that valued added partner. Well, it's it's more than about um, interpreting data, applying critical thinking. Is that it? Rather o- over model building and kind of seeing what the results give you. It's a very simple framework, and I'll say it, it's called the decision cycle, right? And mm. it's processes drive data, data to information, information to knowledge, knowledge to decision making, right? Where you don't want to spend all your time is the processes of getting that. GL data, turning it into information, which is a financial statement, then getting that financial statement uh, and turning it into knowledge, right? You want technology to accelerate you from process to, to, to information, process data information. And where you want your people is focused on that higher value of that decision cycle, which is the knowledge and ultimately the decision making. So that's an easy framework to take. Get technology to do the process, the data, the information, put your people in the right element to have that knowledge to ultimately make a data-driven business decision. That to me is uh, the recipe where technology for finance professionals and CFOs can help complement them in that decision-making framework. Yeah. And I I could see where small and medium businesses are concerned. That would be kind of a force multiplier, right? It gives a lot of leverage to a CFO's office. That'll be be smaller than like, say, uh, I don't know, a Pfizer or something like that. Yeah, I think it, I don't think it limits itself to just SMB or enterprise, right? Like if you're mm-hmm. an enterprise level company and you're not thinking about ways of adopting technology to make you more efficient, then it's like you 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 have access to the capital, right? SMBs primarily don't have that ability to get those best in class technology. So when you're enterprise and you got the resources, you got the commitment, like you can move a lot faster in terms of financial transformation. But I also like working with SMBs where it's like there is no canvas that has been painted. You can go in, get the right people in the right seat, doing the right level of work, bringing the right level of partnership to the business, adding in technology. That's really where you uh, transform. And I've, I've done it in small, medium-sized businesses, all the way to like enterprise pharma, publicly traded companies. Excellent. And this is kind of the current state of play for the CFO's office. Do you, uh, can you give us a peek over the horizon and where do you think this the evolution of this is going to go yeah if i think of looking at the crystal ball for the next five years of the office of the cfo i think one of the most important hats that the cfo is going to have to take off and not to say it's not going to be important in the future right the chief financial officer always going to be the primary focus the primary element but another hat that cfos of the future have to put on is that chief future officer right thinking about the future of the business, right? There, when you think about finance and the office of the CFO, everything stops with the numbers, right? Sales, marketing, rolling to them, operations, IT, HR, everything comes to that. So when we're able to get beyond just providing the numbers and the updates, and we're able to think about how the data, the information, what do we say we're going to do and what do we do? And we answer that question of what are we going to do about it? That's where we really shift and get outside of that stereotype of just being the Excel warriors and the number police and the the budget constraint people, right? Go be valued at it, partner. So for me, when I think about technology, when I think about this shift in terms of mindset and skill set for resources, when I think about this third avenue of being valued partners in the business, that's where CFOs, what I like to call fresh CFOs of the future, are going to win big. And that's the biggest value we're going to have. And it's an exciting time. No, absolutely. Uh, sounds like it. We we get a you know, a, a view of it from where we're sitting, and it it, it does seem like it's a, a dynamic moment to be in. So we have a lot of people who um, members and non-members alike who watch these podcasts, and um, we always like to leave them with a bit of advice. You've had a very interesting and successful career journey. If you could 
pick three pieces of advice to give someone who's at the early stages of their career? Okay. Anything you can leave us with? Three things. First one, ABCs of finance. Always be curious, find ways. Curiosity is a superpower. The opportunities you have to do that and just stay naturally curious throughout my entire career, that's one thing that's really helped me. The second thing is, is this is going to be pretty wild. And I'm probably going to get people message me and say, Chris, that was crazy. Seek failure. Let me say that again. The reason why I say seek failure, some of the biggest comfort zone expansion, some of the biggest moments that you're going to learn in your career is getting over that fear of failure. Failure is just the first step in the process of learning. So once you kind of get over the fear of taking those leaps or failure, you'll open yourself up to so much more learning. There's only two options that I look at in life. I'm either going to win or I'm going to learn. I only lose if I don't learn. So that's that second piece. And the third piece of uh, advice I would give you in your career, do not, do not get infatuated with the titles, the power, the money. Find your North Star. Find what motivates you. Find what gets you passionate and consistently every day work towards that. So for me, those would be my three career advice. If I, if I could go back 21 years ago when I started my career, that's what I would go back to. Always be curious, right? Seek failure and find opportunities and ways to challenge yourself and continue to be a, you know, a value-added professional. And don't Focus focus on what matters and what makes an impact. Don't focus on the, the vanity thing. So that would be my three career tips uh, in, to help those thinking in, in, in their career development. Well, those points are well taken. That's some pretty strong advice. And thank, thank you, you very much, Chris. Thank you. Thank you for your time today. And I hope to uh, see you again on one of our podcasts. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Really appreciate it. It's our pleasure. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. FinPod is brought to you by Corporate Finance Institute, the number one rated online provider of finance and banking training, certifications, and productivity tools.